Hello everyone, Alyssa your TA here with another demo on networks. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about making networks from real world data and applying a bunch of measures to figure out what the heck is going on. So I'm going to use my favorite data set as an example. Um, it's not typically what's considered a biological data set, it is a video game data set. But I like to argue that it is biological because it is um, made by humans and used by humans and for humans and humans are biological. So, <laughs> uh, so League of Legends is a video game super popular in Korea and China and in North America as well and other places of the world. But um, they're always making changes to this game and they post all of their data on their website for free. And I find that super exciting because I like to study this game and figure out, you know, how do humans interact by using this game and what sort of exciting things can we learn about this data. So I collect um, the data through Python. And I know this is a Mathematica demo, so I'm not going to go through Python, but I thought it would be good just to show you guys um, just a you know, real quick overview, um, kind of like from a data science perspective. So um, what they do is they post all of their data through their API, and you can get an API key and just make requests to it. I mean, there's several ways you can do it, but this is just how you can do it through Python. You don't have to worry about it at all. So, um, you know, this is just a whole script for, um, you know, different codes of connecting to the server, not connecting to the server, handling that timing, stuff like that. And then what I do is I take the data and I massage that into a bunch of networks that I may or may not want to look at and I save them into some nice files. And then this one over here is just to uh, study that. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, take, uh, take the script all the way through here and I'm going to be taking this entire data set because I have it chunked up into smaller bits here, but I'm going to be taking the entire data set, porting it over to Mathematica, and that's where we're going to, we're going to start. So I'm going to tell you a little bit what's going on in the data, kind of like a story. Like, what, what are we looking at? So, like, we know what the structure looks like. We know uh, how to read it and stuff like that. But, like, what, what does it mean? Um, so... The way I set it up was I'm really interested in strategies. I really want to know what makes a really cool strategy and how do these strategies evolve over time. And by strategy, I mean picking a character, right? So they say, uh, the game developers say that all characters are viable in League of Legends. But, however, the community knows that, well, that's not necessarily true. Sometimes uh, this character is really good. But they might not have been really good last month, but they might be even better next month. So if I started playing League of Legends in February, and then I stopped, and then I started playing again in June, the game might actually be completely different in terms of what strategies are good and what strategies are bad. So I'm really interested in knowing and understanding how those strategies change over time. Um, so I created this network of um, having character A beating character B. So like in this uh, uh, in, in this chunk right here of the data, it means that character number 81, whoever that might be, beat character number 164. So I actually have some slides here because I give this talk all the time. I like this game. So uh, character Timo beats character Tristana, meaning when there was this game where a bunch of players were in it, Timo was on the winning team and Tristana was on the losing team. So that's kind of like a coarse-grained uh, view of it, and you can sort of make like arguments like, well, maybe they didn't really interact all that much, but you know, I'm just trying to simplify it as much as possible. So you can take that idea and um, apply it to a bunch of uh, matches. So a whole bunch of people play, and over time you get a whole bunch of these results. So this is actually uh, a, a, a smaller example of um, a data set from the games that I played in. So I am this red node, node here, and I like to play pretty much just one character, which is actually this Teemo guy here. And you could see that this was everything that I saw when I was playing this game. So I saw that uh, this character beat that character, uh, this character beat that character, and you know so on and so forth out of all the games that I played in. So I took that generalized idea and I was like, you know what, I'm going to look at the top 200 players in the North American server and I want to see one month's worth of, of gameplay. So this is what this file is right here. It is the conglomeration of 
200 players over a one month period. All of their games together in one file. So it's a really big file. And that's why the file is actually, uh, when you look at how many edges it has, it has 18,000 edges. It's because there are so many games that were played. And not just because there's so many edges, but you look at the weights. Each weight means that there was 148 games where this happened. So, um, like for example, if Timo was 81 and Tristana was, what is it, 164, that means Timo beat Tristana 148 times in the games that I'm looking at. So that's great. What directory are we in? Because we have a file somewhere on the computer, it's got data. And your data can be in whatever format. It could be uh, an Excel file, it could be a CSV file, it could be a text file. You don't know, but all you want to, all you, you're interested in doing is turning that into a network. So Mathematica will tell you where you're at on your computer, so you just all you need to do is do directory. Great. So that way when you're going to import your file, you know how many um, directory you know you know how to navigate to your directory. The data is with my Python file. It's in that same directory. So I'm going to navigate over there and I'm going to select it. Um, I'm also going to post this data for you guys on uh, the class website so you guys can download it yourselves and play with it and have lots of fun and follow along. Let's go ahead and load it in. So uh, it's it's a JSON blob, blob, that's the format. So I'm going to import it in like that and then when I run it, uh, it gives me, you can see like a preview, right? And then you can show more. Uh, I said show more. See, there we go. And you can see this is what it looks like, right? All right, so like I said, if you do data engineering, it's a lot of stuff like that. You take uh, data from one source, whether it's straight off somebody's website, or if it's some floppy disk that somebody just handed you, or a CD, or something on a thumb drive, and you want to put it into a database, or you want to um, do something else with it, this is the kind of stuff you're, you're gonna be doing. Uh, you're gonna be taking it from one format and putting it into another format. All right, so. Let's put that into a graph. But first, in order to put it into a graph, we want to know what kind of uh, format Mathematica is going to like. So we can just sort you use our uh, nice, friendly uh, documentation here, and we can figure that out. So graph likes to you, you can give it a set of edges, you can give it a set of vertices with edges, and some other things like that. So uh, examples, I like the examples the most. I think they're the nicest. So this is good, but we have a directed graph. Um, I'm going to be following this kind of example here. I like this format because my uh, nodes are labeled with some sort of numbers. So you have sources, targets, and weights. So this is all I'm interested in. I'm just interested in this giant list of weights, sources, and targets here. So I'm going to take that concept because I can also put my weights in... Uh, blah, blah, blah. You can see options, and you can do edge weight as well. And yeah, so as long as you do your uh, A to B sort of thing, and if you keep your weights in the same exact order, then that's how it's going to accept it. Excellent. All right, so since it's uh, this is very specific to just the file format that I had, um, but what it says is uh, Mathematica has a JSON parser. Uh, called lookup. So because my JSON format is everything that I want with the weight, source, and target, it's under links, I'm just going to use lookup and then it just gives me that part of the uh, of this thing that I want to look at. So that's great. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the word and the arrow here and I'm just going to remember the ordering is weight, source, target. So that's what I do here. So I'll, I just say, well, that's just the values. And I use my shortcut, as you remember. So this means take the values at all the items. So this is one item in my list of links. And this is my entire list. Cool. So that's what I get here. And that looks wonderful. That's what I want. And so now what I want to do is I want to take this. I want 81 to go to 53. 81 to 43, 81 to 64. I want to make a bunch of arrows out of that. So in order to do that, I'm going to make a specialized function. Um, but this time, I'm going to use a shortcut notation. So shortcut notation is, I remember last time we used F 
what what was it? It was like uh, f bracket x underscore bracket, you know, this sort of thing. So that works, and that's fine. There's uh, absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but there's a shortcut way of doing that by using these uh, hashes here. Hashtags. Uh, so what you do is your hashtag here is going to be your variable, and you activate your variable by using the at. And then this means apply it to all of your elements here. So this means that I'm going to take whatever my element is, which is uh, like, for example, one of these, take the second one, make an arrow, and point it to the third one, apply it to all the stuff in my, li in, in my list of links. And that's, that's what it gives you. So that's great. So those are my edges. And now I want my weights, which is super easy because all I want to do is take the first item of this list, er, the first item of all the elements in the list, and that's what I get. Hooray! So now we're super ready just to uh, put it right into our function. So this is what it gives you. I pre-computed this because it takes like a second or two, and uh, my computer does not like it. So why? Well, it's because even though that there are like 140-ish edges, or sorry, sorry, there's only 140-ish nodes, there are 18,000 edges. Um, this isn't readable, like, at all, right? And this is what happens with visualizing networks. Like, a lot of the time, visualizing networks is really awesome, and you can see a lot of things. But sometimes with real-world data, you get giant hairballs like this. This doesn't say anything to me, especially if I had two of them and I wanted to compare. I mean, I don't know. E even if I zoomed in a whole lot, it's just it's just like this massive hairball of, of nonsense. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to give it some measurements. So uh, let's go back to the documentation, and I love this documentation so much because you don't have to Google anything because, you know, with Python, you'd be like, um, Python networks measures, and then you get some sort of network X documentation, and, you know, but with this, it's all installed on your computer. So it has guides, and it also has examples as well. Sweet. So we can do some basic properties, you know, is this a graph? Well, we know it's a graph, um, you know, so you could see like, is this a vertex in my graph? Is this an edge in my graph? Stuff like that. Um, you can see if it's a simple graph, an acyclic graph, is it a tree graph, is it a Eulerian graph? All sorts of things like that. Or Eulerian? Eulerian? Man. Um, you can do some basic measures, distance measures, connectivity, centrality. My gosh, the list goes on and on and on. Like, we can just blast it with as many measures as we want, right? So let's go ahead and try a couple of these measures. So we have the vertex count, which is how many verte vertices there are, and our edge count. So, like I said, there's 140-ish, and then there's like 18,000-ish edges, right? And... If we wanted to list out the vertex degree for every vertex in our network, we can just do that by vertex degree. And then we can do it by vertex. So if we get our vertex degree, like this is cool, this is the degree of every uh, vertex on our graph, but we don't actually know what vertex that corresponds to. Um, so if we want, we can get our vertex list. And we're like, okay, uh, so vertex number 81 has a degree of 280. That's not super readable. So what we can do is we can transport, transpose them together like this, and that will put them in uh, tuples. So that will stick them together. So if we look for 81, we would find it. But I'm also all, uh, going to sort it by uh, the last thing. So the last thing is the vertex degree. So um, like this, you can see, uh, uh, Node number 75 has a degree of 144, and all of these are slowly increasing to the highest degree of 280. So 144 is the lowest degree. So that's pretty interesting. So even though we can blast it with all these measures, we want to really think about what the data means. Like, what is the context of this data, right? So uh, remember that this is all about what character beats what other character. So an obvious question might be, what's the best character? Uh, is there a way to know uh, what characters are the best characters and which ones are the worst characters? Um, well, from intuition, we could say that, well, if you have a uh, node that has a lot of out degrees, uh, like a lot of arrows going out, means it beats a lot of characters. 
um, just in general. We're, we're ignoring the weights for now. And if it has uh, really few incoming edges, that means that it's you know, not a lot of characters beat it. So we want nodes that have a high out degree and a low in degree. So uh, let's just see the distribution of these degrees. So here's just straight up the regular degrees, uh, not in degree and out degree, it's both of them together considered. And uh, if you just sort it, because uh, like if you don't sort it, um, let's see, basically what it looks like is this, because uh, the x-axis here is just the labels for the characters. It's not an actual numeric it, like the numbers don't mean anything. They're just labels. They're just names. So if I wanted to um, look at this in a more meaningful way, because these don't matter, you can just reorder them because they're, they're just names. So I, I did. And so you can just ignore this x-axis here and you can see the distribution of these characters uh, and with their degrees. So, okay. So, but we're more interested in in degrees and out degrees, right? So we can do the same thing with in degrees and the same thing with out degrees. But let's say we want to see a ratio of in degree and out degree. So if we, if you have a node with a high in degree and a low out degree, it's going to have a high value. So we want to see that. And what we get is something kind of cool. Look at that. It's so cool. So this is super interesting, right? But however, we still haven't uh, considered the weights of the edges. So what we can do is we can consider centrality. So this is going back to um, uh, the lectures, right? Centrality has to do with like the closeness, closeness, like what, you know, what's around it, uh, it has, you can think of it in terms of friendships and things like that. My personal favorite centrality measure is the eigenvector centrality. So Intuitively, eigenvector centrality means that if you are a popular person, if, if you have lots of friends, you're going to have a high eigenvector centrality, but if your friends also have a lot of friends, then you have an even higher eigenvector centrality. So that's kind of like saying, um, sure, if you have a lot of friends, uh, you're popular, but if your friends are also really popular, then you're super popular. So um, it, it's kind of the difference between being friends with Barack Obama and uh, Gandhi and uh, I don't know, people you know people like that versus people that nobody's ever heard of. So and that has to do with and it also uses the uh, edge weights as well. So if you just look at the background and context, so it gives you some sort of information on that, and it also gives you uh, some details and options. Um, so it's saying that for a directed graph, which is what we have, if you use this function on the graph, it's equivalent to saying eigenvector centrality of the in degrees. So it's considering the in degrees. And it can also consider the out degrees as well. So let's do the same thing that we did here, where we take the ratio of out degrees to in degrees, but we do it with the eigenvector centrality instead. So here we go. We've got our in degrees just to look uh, you know, just for comparison, and it's, it's fairly the same. And same with out degree, but that's actually, you know, fairly similar. And we do the same thing like that. And we still get the same shape. So now we have this really interesting shape, and we can say that the characters, these character dots, whatever they are over here, are really, really good because they have more out degrees, and they also, uh, more out degrees and in degrees. And also, they are beating characters that also beat other characters a lot. And for here, uh, the opposite is, is uh, true. So you've got a lot of in degrees, so a lot of characters beating them, but they don't beat a lot of characters as well. Now, if we wanted to think about things like entropy. So this, like, uh, if you wanted to think of a random network, you would think that the in-degree and out-degree uh, distribution would look different. How do you think it would look different? Do you think you could get a, uh, a similar plot for a randomly generated network? Or do you think this is unique to something that's biological or a social network or something like that? So I would highly encourage you to um, take these uh, sort of clips of code and try it out yourself. See. 
um, based on what every, everything that you see here, if you can make a random graph and uh, apply the same measurements and see what you get. It would be really cool to discuss it on the forums and uh, have a really fun, lively discussion on it. And of course, if you get stuck, if you want to try this out and you get stuck, please email me or ask a question on the forums. But there is also this uh, guide here. So for example, if I wanted to make a random graph, maybe they have an example on it already. Hey, wouldn't you know? So this should be able to be more than enough to get you started. Good luck, and I will see you on the forums.